Today, let's review a few techniques and specific words that you can use to make your small talk conversations flow in English. Hi there, I'm your English coach, Christina, and welcome to Speak English with Christina, where you'll learn American culture and business know-how to become confident in English. Small talk is a great way to create connections. To have successful small talk in American culture, you need to create a friendly, relaxed atmosphere and focus on common ground. And today, you'll get useful tips to make this easier for you. Let's go. Plus, tomorrow, Big news! You'll have the chance to become a master of small talk in English. We open registration for my course, Successful Small Talk, tomorrow. And when you join, you get much more in-depth advice, lessons, and exercises to practice small talk and feel comfortable in everyday conversations. Be sure to sign up to get your invitation in the link below this video. Before we jump into the specific vocabulary you can use to create connections, you need to understand some context from American culture. In some cultures, especially in France, for example, a good conversation is often lively with frequent interruptions and friendly disagreements, and conversations can easily become animated debates, and, and that's fine. But in the US, a contrarian attitude, where you try to debate and challenge others' opinions, can be seen as aggressive. In small talk, we try to find similarities and make connections based on the things that we agree on. And when we disagree, we tend to do it gently with the words that we'll look at now. The word actually can be very useful for your conversation. Now, careful. For many Latin-based languages like French, Spanish, Portuguese, or Italian, actually is a false friend. It means in fact or in truth. And it's very useful to gently correct someone or to agree enthusiastically. If someone asks you, for instance, so I heard you're working with Juliet, well, you can gently correct them with actually, like, actually I'm working with Janet. Or you can enthusiastically confirm their statement with, uh, yes, I am actually. We use actually very often for corrections, but be careful. Making too many corrections over and over and over can be seen as aggressive and a little rude. Sometimes you can simply just let people be wrong and go with the flow. In American culture, you want to keep small talk positive. So when you can agree with the other person, do it loud and clear. For that, you can use the words, that's true and you're right, as in, so, I heard Juliet is a good boss, right? You can answer, yeah, that's true, she's amazing. Or, yeah, you're right, we've made a lot of progress thanks to her. And people love to hear that they're right, so say it. But it has to be sincere, though. Finally, here's a special expression that you can use to sound just like an American. It's the phrase, I hear you. And it's not about the sound of their voice, it's about empathy, especially with bad situations. With, I hear you, you're saying, yeah, I understand, we share a similar experience and a point of view. For example, oh, I can't find my glasses. Why do I always lose them? 
yeah, I hear you. I'm always putting them down, looking for them for 10 minutes and seeing that they were just in front of me. Happens all the time. Small talk isn't only saying yes and I agree though. It's about creating a connection and a good way to do that is by pointing out common ground. It's anything that you have in common, a hobby, an experience, or an opinion you share. People like people who share their experiences and way of life. And more importantly, it's a positive way to keep the conversation flowing. And that way, both of you can add something about the topic at hand. And to point out common ground, you can say, me too, or so do I. And if you can add a question after it, it'll help the conversation too. For instance, I went to this really nice Italian restaurant yesterday. Oh, me too, where did you go? Technically, after a negative sentence, we use me neither or neither do I. I feel like I'm the only one in the world, but I really don't like Game of Thrones. That's funny, neither do I. Notice how we use that's funny to point out a coincidence, by the way. Finally, the art of small talk also involves finding a bridge. If the other person is sharing something, you want to find the common ground without looking like you only want to talk about yourself. And there are a lot of possibilities for this. Let's say your conversation partner tells you, we went to Aspen in the Rockies for vacation last year and got to try cross-country skiing for the first time. Hard stuff. How can you answer? Well, try to find a common ground with this sentence. Maybe you've visited the Rockies too. Maybe you like cross-country skiing or you simply have something to say about winter sports. Be positive and try to use a word that you've seen today, like actually, I hear you, that's funny, or you're right. And here's a challenge for you to try. Write your response in the comments below and be creative with it. Also, you'll find a lot more exercises and in-depth lessons to master small talk in English with my course, Successful Small Talk. Registrations open tomorrow, October 17th, 2018. Click the image below and join my list so that you get your invitation. I don't want you to miss this chance. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.